Our next Field Talk presenter is Jeff J Jarvis. Jeff is a professor and director of the Toll Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. Recently, Jeff started the News Integrity Initiative, funded with $14 million by Facebook, the Craig Newmark Philanthropy Fund, Mozilla, the Democracy Fund, the Knight, Ford, and Toll Foundations, and several other funders. So Jeff is here to present to us. Please welcome Jeff. Thank you, thank you, Athea. That was, that was just really great uh, and, and hard to follow. Um, so I, I think I'm here because I've, I, I used to earn money and then I begged for money and now I get to give money away. And so I find myself suddenly being a funder uh, uh, like you. And, and I want to give you a little bit of the genesis of how this came about and then talk about this, this issue of fake news. After the election, as you all know, a lot of money became available, or as I like to say, put my hand out and I, and I got some, uh, around this notion of what the hell do we do about an informed public and an informed public conversation and the manipulation of it. So I, I talked to my friend Craig Newmark, who I've known for some years, and uh, he invited a proposal. We gave him a proposal about looking at the public conversation rather than just looking at the platforms or media companies. He quickly approved it, uh, and then suddenly out of nowhere, Facebook called and said, we're looking uh, to do more around journalism. What are you doing? I said, we're setting up this structure with Craig. He's, they said, we like structure. So we got more money. Uh, then Ford came along and then the other funders you heard about. Uh, so now we have this organization. Uh, and I want to tell you just a minute or so about the governance of it, because I think you'll find that interesting and necessary. So yes, I'm working with Facebook and I'm working with others as well, including companies. And so we, we work very hard to make the governance work such that we have independence uh, at CUNY, but at the same time, we want to be able to collaborate with Facebook and Google and the platforms and try to be a bridge for them with publishers and with others. So we have a small executive committee made up of me, a representative of Facebook and Craig Newmark. Uh, we have a veto power over certain actions uh, on that committee so that we can make sure that we have independence. Um, and I just hired, uh, I'm privileged to have hired Molly Diagiar, who many of you I'm sure know from the Dodge Foundation, and my friend Chris Dag has been nice enough not to shoot me as a result uh, as the head of Dodge. So Molly is going to be very independent and, and to report directly to our dean, Sarah Bartlett. So that's our structure. Uh, we uh, are going to fund uh, research that informs our work, uh, projects, which is the main focus, and events uh, at a local, national, international level. Um, what the heck can we do that others aren't doing? Well, I spoke last night on the phone with uh, someone from the Hewlett Foundation who's doing incredible work in this and doing amazing things. I was at the Media Impact Funders meeting in Washington where there are others doing this. So it's critical, obviously, that we come together and compare notes and understand what we're doing and collaborate as funders and collaborate as researchers. So what I really want to talk to you about now is what the hell do we do uh, about this? Um, I don't know if you've heard of Data and Society, a wonderful think tank in New York run by Dana Boyd, uh, who's just brilliant. They did a report uh, about two weeks ago on manipulation of media, and it's changed my notion of what we're about here. Uh, because if we talk about fake news as a piece of bad content that we have somewhere, uh, then we tend to try to look at, try to find ways to just tamp it down like whack-a-mole. But the truth is, we are being manipulated by an array of actors who have related but separate motivations, but who what they share is techniques and tactics. And so uh, Data and Society's report uh, lists the taxonomy of the bad guys, trolls, gamer gators, um, uh, so-called men's rights activists, uh, alt-right, uh, white nationalists, and so on. It lists where they work. They work up through 4chan and 8chan into Breitbart, into um, Alex Jones, who will be seen on TV Sunday, unfortunately, uh, up through Fox, up into CNN. Because at the point it reaches CNN, they're saying, well, everybody's talking about this. We have to cover this. And thus, we are giving the bad guys just exactly what they want, which is attention. Dana Boyd from Data and Society also taught me that part of the problem here is that 
the paradox we're stuck in is that when we in journalism do our jobs, we play into their hands. We play into their hands by giving them attention. Even when we fact check and debunk them, that's what they want. They want enemies. So what the heck do we do? Um, then I also read a report, uh, as odd as this sounds, uh, a NATO handbook on Russian information warfare. Uh, it was chilling in that it was an exact script for what we are, we are recognizing now, what we are going through now. And the goal of, and I'm not trying to say that Russians are in charge of everything, maybe the White House, we don't know, we'll find out soon, but not everything. Um, but again, the techniques are similar because they are learning from each other and we and institutions aren't learning from them. We are holding ourselves back and above and separate from it saying, well, they're playing that dirty little game, but they're having a conversation with the public that we're not having. They're going into Facebook and talking to people in their conversations where they are. We're not doing that. They're creating memes and other mechanisms that people can pass around on their own in their conversations. We don't do that. We write articles still. And we tell, tell people you have to come to us to be blessed with the news. We create programs in news literacy, which is a fine thing, and I'll support some of that. But I'm also concerned that news literacy is media-centric and says to the public, if you read our news, you're literate, and if you don't, you're not. It's media-centric. So the Russians uh, don't see cyber warfare. They see information sphere as all the same, and that allows them to operate across the internet to mainstream media in a psychological sense. Uh, there's also a RAND uh, Corporation report. I know I'm sounding paranoid now reading RAND and NATO, but this is our world. Uh, I'll get my tooth transmitting out in a second. Uh, so, so the RAND report points out that if you, if, if, if you deal in falsehood, you have the advantage of speed, because getting facts takes time. Making up facts up doesn't take any time. And thus the bad guys get out there fast and they set the agenda. They also have the advantage of volume, because they can make crap up and they can create bots that will spread that around. Um, so that's the world in which we now live. And we've got to come up with new strategies to figure it out, and that's what I hope the News Integrity Initiative can help do is to understand how to build those strategies. So I'll list a couple things really quickly and then I'll get off stage. Um, first is we need awareness of what is happening. We in media especially, but across, I just ran some sessions for the World Economic Forum in San Francisco a week ago, and I found that corporations are aware of these kinds of manipulation uh, targets, uh, but they're only aware of what affects them. We in media aren't really aware at all. Storiful, I funded a piece uh, that Storiful wrote arguing that major news organizations should have a 4chan correspondent, should have someone who is digging into this horrible underbelly and give that person combat pay to figure out what's going on and what's coming next. What are they going after next? Um, then the next thing we have to do is to share information. I think that every uh, news organization should have, or major news organization should have a network of security officers who are watching out for what's happening, who are informing the newsroom so they know when they're getting used. There should be a network among them. Same thing for corporations. Same thing for NGOs. Government, I'm not so sure what to do about right now. But, but we've got to be more aware of what's happening so that we're savvy about this. Next, we have to get ahead of it. The RAND report says that if we try, what we try to do is people are, are spewing misinformation over here, so we try to spew facts over there. No, we're never gonna win because of speed and volume. We have to get ahead. So one of the things they're going after soon is the, is the US Census, because they want to devalue that. At the World Economic Forum meetings, I heard someone very smart, Chatham House rules, so I won't say who, say that his fear is what's gonna come next is a tax on the pillars of society. Doctors, accountants, judges. Gee, what has Trump been doing about judges in his tweet? Um, another fear that communities which I think are the bedrock of this in the safety zone, another smart person in San Francisco said, well, no, if you watch community behavior online now, you see that anyone who has an opinion that diverges from the orthodoxy of the community is treated as a shill and the bloodstream evicts them. So communities of diversity aren't necessarily the bedrock that I had hoped because they're not diverse, because they make themselves not diverse. Um, so, we have to get ahead. 
we should be recovering right now and saying the census is a great thing. It is a necessary thing. It is well done, though God knows it's the head just left. Um, but we have to get ahead of what, of what the bad guys are going to do. That's what we do in journalism. Um, we have to learn from the bad guys. Uh, we have to use some of the techniques that they use so that we can understand how to do this stuff ourselves. Uh, I have argued even to uh, Nick Kristof, uh, who's a neighbor of my, at my office on 40th Street, and I ran into him and I, and I said, you know, what you should do next, Nick, is memes. Do memes, young man. Now, I'm not suggesting, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that Nick should stop writing his columns. But what you see now is that, not because of me, but the Times is now doing little gifts, boxes, that have an idea, an action, a fact in them that can be passed around. I'm going next week to a wonderful conference called VidCon, which is 25,000 YouTube fans, mainly young women, including my daughter. And I learned at VidCon in the last two years that when my daughter shares a video, she's not saying, this is a very good product, you should sit and watch. She's saying this speaks for me. It's part of her conversation. So how do we learn what the bad guys are doing and make journalism and facts and truth and sense part of people's conversations by feeding them in that? We have to change journalism fundamentally to do that. And the first thing we have to do is listen better. We are crappy listeners. I started a new program at CUNY in social journalism, which is predicated on the idea that we uh, must listen first. Finally, we have to rebuild trust in media and in other institutions. And that's gonna take a long time. That's a longer term project, obviously. It means that we have to change those institutions fundamentally, and that's the longer term goal. So trust and manipulation are the two goals we're gonna attack at the News Integrity Initiative. Trust is the important initiative. It's the long term one, but in the short term, we have an emergency. If we don't deal with manipulation, these institutions may not live to reinvent themselves. Thank you very much.